Some years ago, while traveling in China as an ordinary tourist, I happened to visit the Olympic Park and came across a strange sight. A middle-aged man vigorously singing a revolutionary song from the 1960s. was paying any attention to him, but he didn't seem to care. His mind was in the past, pining for the great proletarian cultural revolution of Chairman Mao Zedong. I'll call him Mr. Lee. And it's very possible that as a young man, Mr. Lee was a fanatical follower of Chairman Mao. In other words, Mr. Lee must have been a former Red Guard. As a young, impressionable college student at that time, I too believed in Mao's revolution. We were told that Red China, as the country was called then, had almost eliminated poverty and was unbelievably clean. We used to say in school, imagine there are no flies or spitting in China. <laughs> it sounded too good to be true. And it was. Mao turned out to be no better than the most brutal dictators in history, responsible for the deaths of millions of his countrymen. He denounced his perceived rivals, such as Deng Xiaoping and Liu Shaoqi, as counter-revolutionaries. But upon Mao's death, his communist utopia died with him. Deng Xiaoping, purged many times by Mao, reversed Mao's revolution. It doesn't matter if a cat is black or white, as long as it catches mice. To be rich is glorious. China was opening up to the world and to eager visitors like myself, fascinated by China's history. In 1986, I traveled to China for the first time with my father. I saw a China thoroughly modernizing, determined to become a major player in world politics. Like millions of other Filipinos, I grew up very much attached to America. American songs, American movies, Deng Xiaoping was giving his own people a taste of freedom. But the people demanded more and more of it, and then clamored for democracy. Deng said, enough. <laughs> This was quickly forgotten. China's insatiable drive to superpower status did not stop. Never more would it suffer exploitation from the West. Today, it is the world's second largest economy after the U.S., a dream Mao never achieved. We could make toys in this country. There's no reason to go to China. I would tax China very, very heavily. I love China. I announce my separation from the United States. China has found a great new leader, Xi Jinping. In Xi Jinping, China's proclaimed president for life, China has found a new emperor. A 
new Mao, who no longer talks about exporting revolution, but exporting prosperity. China is literally everywhere in the world. And the things we buy, clothes we wear, and the things we eat, China is there. I've told you how many times, the city is crowded, the city is crowded. You're calling me a call. This is the new world order that our own president is eager to be part of. So eagerly that he exaggerates his importance to China. He says he loves Xi Jinping. I just simply love Xi Jinping. The question is, does Xi Jinping love him back? China's new leader would love a scorpion if, in exchange, he got something much more than a deadly animal. What is the real deal behind these two? Do you know, Mr. Li? The fact is, wherever you may be, Mr. Li, you may already stop pining for the unlamented days of Chairman Mao. Because the new China is here. Come to our country. Join your fellow citizens in exploiting our resources, ravaging our patrimony, and eroding our sovereignty. Thank you, China.